sometimes the smallest details make all the difference, as Kevin went on to explain. I think this time, the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, was arguably the most fertile time in carp fishing's history with rigs. Uh, the bent hook come out, swimmer rigs come out. A lot of this was down to you know, Rob Maining and his friends. Rob Maining was really at his peak of carp fishing then. And he's a guy of the greatest respect for, a real thinking angler. It was Rob that come up with a finger test where he used to drag his uh, pop-up rigs like his swimmer rig across his finger to make sure it caught. I started doing that with my bottom bait rigs but it seemed to me the worst tide rigs would work so one day I tipped my hand up and dragged it across my palm. That seemed to me a much more relevant test and that's how the palm test come about which I still use to this day. I noticed how critical uh, the angle of the hook link coming off the eye was. It really justified our thinking of the liner liner. I also noticed how blunt my hooks were. You know, I was dragging them across my palm. Some would turn and dig in. Others kind of skidded off my palm. So uh, I had a friend who was a jeweler at the time. So I got him to start sharpening my hooks. He used to charge me 50 pence, which was a lot of money in those days. But the difference it made in my tape rate was unbelievable. And that was replicating the palm test now. You know, as soon as I tensioned the hook link, the hook turned over because of his tiny liner liner style. It pricked, you know, and just stayed there. That's why we pay so much attention to our hooks now. In fact, the current range, we went to a Japanese university and they tested the best ways of making them as sharp as possible. I think it's really relevant. You know, hooks must be absolutely needle sharp. I won't tie a bottom bait rig today without giving it the palm test. I think it really is representative of what's going on with the carp. In fact, when I started using it, I showed a few mates, including a northern friend, and there's no nonsense attitude. He said, well, carp ain't got hands. But the point is, I noticed the hook holds I started getting in the carp's mouth were directly replicated on my palm. I see the palm is the palate of the carp. The edge of my palm is its lips. So when I give, do the palm test, as soon as I tension the hook link, I'm looking for that hook to turn and dig in well before it reaches the edge of the palm. There's two, three inches there where I don't want to waste the opportunity to hook the carp. When my hook turns and pricks, I'm hardly tensioning the hook link because the next thing I do is then turn my palm up on its side. If the hook falls off, it's not sharp enough for me. I'll try that a couple of times and if it's still falling out, then I'll get my diamond lap. I just very gently just rub it three times. Like imagine the point the hook is like a triangle. So just three gentle rubs, just really to take any tarnish off and get it sharp again. Then I'll test it again. Generally it will dig in then. If it doesn't, I'll reject the hook and the rig. Another thing I noticed from the palm test was how critical the anchor point of the hair was. Really, the nearer it is to the top, or even in the centre of the bend, like the original hair, is the perfect position. That's where the hook easily turns and pricks best. But as we found out from the original hair, they used that anchor point to help them rid themselves of the hook. But with the slideable hair, you've got the best of both worlds. You've got the optimum anchor point position but as soon as they then blow against the bait, it shoots back and they can't use that anchor position to get rid of the hook. Kevin's attention to detail and forward thinking got him the results he was after. I was back on that gravel pit where I caught the, uh, the, the mid-30. It was uh, late winter, early spring. I was really into my rig experimenting. In fact, I caught 20 20s in six weeks. I'm not you know, saying that to brag, but the point I want to make is that no one else in the syndicate caught a fish in that time. Um, everything's really coming together now, moving the hair point, uh, making sure the hooks are really sharp, the liner liner effect. Before I got all these things together, when I dragged the rig across my palm, I was catching more in the edge where I imagined it was a carp's lips, but now there's always pricking two, three inches back, and that's exactly where the hook holes were in the carp I was catching. It was awesome. 
The palm test also showed me uh, the importance of the gap between the barley and the hook. I like to use the you know, smallest hook as possible, so often the barley may be a, a bit bigger than the hook and it masks the hook and its turning ability. But if you have a gap between the bend and the barley of at least half an inch, well that's a good starting place. You'll see even a small hook will turn properly and dig in straight away. I think the only time I would shorten the gap down between the barley and the hook is if I was using a short hook link. Actually I don't really use them much at all. Um, seems to be a trend of brainwashing at the moment to use six inch or whatever length hook links. I don't like them, I don't seem to be able to catch big fish on them. You know, they might work with smaller carp, but it certainly don't seem to work with the big girls that I fish for. So for that reason I use hook links around 9 to 11, 12 inches. Uh, and in that instance, you know, half inch between the boy and the bend and the hook works brilliantly. It's not only with my new rigs I use a palm test. Every time I wind in, I check the hook sharpness across my palm. I noticed that on a lot of lakes uh, you can put out a really sharp hook, bring it in and it's lost this point. This isn't you know, down to the fact I'm blunting it when I'm pulling back. It's definitely the bottom of the lakes, they're very corrosive, acidic. Um, one way around that by the way is to dip your hook point in Vaseline to mask them and uh, stop them getting corroded. But every time I wind in I'll check that hook, if it's dull I'll give it a, you know, a few laps, uh, if it's still blunt. Uh, then I'll change the rig. You just can't take any chances. I think probably the single most important element in hooking carp is that sharp hook. It's as simple as that.